Breastfeeding is natural. Though breastfeeding should almost always be easy, the fact that two or three generations of mothers have breastfed very little, and the fact that most health professionals have had no practical training in helping mothers get started right, has resulted in breastfeeding becoming difficult for too many mothers. This video helps mothers understand the techniques and the importance of breastfeeding by cutting through some of the contradictory information that often makes breastfeeding so confusing and difficult. It wasn't that long ago that people saw mothers breastfeeding all the time. They were there in real life, they were there in paintings, and it's not inconceivable that a woman can grow up in North America now and never ever in their whole life had ever seen a baby at the breast. And so the whole visual image of what a baby is supposed to look like at the breast has been completely lost as well. And so mothers come to deliver a baby and they suddenly uh, realize when they've got that baby in their arms, I don't know what to do with this baby. And of course, the people that are helping her often don't know either because they also don't have the visual image of the baby at the breast rather than a baby feeding from a bottle. Yes, it's extremely important for a baby to be skin to skin with a mother immediately after birth. Not for just five or six minutes, but for a full hour or two. Really does wonders for the baby. It results in the baby sometimes latching on all by himself. And when they do that, they usually latch on really well. It keeps their blood sugars up to be skin to skin contact with the mother. It keeps their temperature up much better than an incubator. And the studies show that the mothers and the babies who are kept skin to skin are usually breastfeeding longer and more exclusively than those babies that are separated. Furthermore, the babies cry less if they're skin to skin with the mother. I would say that probably about 90% of all the problems that we see in the clinic can be resumed as, I don't have enough milk, my nipples are sore, the baby's refusing to latch on, and then maybe another small percentage, my baby is colicky. But I think that what we really need to show mothers, what mothers are not really learning, and not only mothers, but a lot of health professionals don't really know how to get a baby to well latch on to the breast, how to know if that baby is well latched on, and how to know the baby is getting milk. And I think that actually that last one is of supreme importance. And once we have uh, people understanding how to know a baby's getting milk, then a lot of the problems can be dealt with. So how do we prevent the slow flow is we get the best latch possible. So you push in with the side of the, your forearm here, your hand underneath the baby's face. The nipple then should automatically point to the roof of the baby's mouth, you see that? So run the nipple along the baby's upper lip and then straight on. That's powerful. There, you saw that pause in the chin? Mm -hmm. So these little nibbles that he was doing means not that much milk is getting to him, but he doesn't need a lot at this age. Okay. And if he doesn't drink, then yeah. squeeze. It's really tricky to see mm -hmm. if you're not used to it. There, mouthful, you saw a little pause. He'll go pause. Pause. And that pause in the chin, now if the baby were on perfectly, he'd be looking up at you a little bit. Okay, okay, so let's try that again. Run the nipple along his upper lip from one corner to the other. Wait for that gape straight on. See, if the baby latches on here, you see, they get nothing, right? Mm -hmm. They latch on here, and they start to get milk. You see, that's colostrum, because you see the color of it, it's golden.
if the baby latches on here, that's what the baby gets. But if the baby latches on here, there's still lots of milk. How and why it is so important to latch correctly is to give them the analogy of having a whole pile of straws in their breast. So if you have a whole bunch of straight straws, maybe there are 15 to 20 to 25 of straight straws in the breast, and you latch baby on correctly so that the chin comes in the breast and not the nose, you'll get nice flowing of the milk through the straws. Okay, so let's point out what's so different, why this latch is what you're calling the miracle. Very often, moms are pushing the nose into the breast, and when that happens, the nipple will then go centered in the mouth, and that causes pain. Mm -hmm. So we don't want that. We'd like to keep the nipple pointed up towards the roof of the mouth. See the nipple inside the mouth pointing that way. Well, how do I know it's pointed that way? If the chin is in the breast, touching, mm -hmm. and the nose does not, so I can actually pass my finger through here. Mm -hmm. There's no touching. That means that the nipple must be pointed up. And you can imagine with the areola here, an asymmetric latch, we see more areola there. The rest looks like it's disappearing in the mouth or jaw. It shows me that the nipple is pointed up to the roof where it's protected. But something else happens, not just is the nipple protected, but now baby gets more milk because now baby can get this area of the jaw around the parts of the ducts which act like milk sinuses and help to compress on that and use the tongue to help bring the milk along those ducts. So that way baby can get much more milk this way than just being on the nipple or just having the nipple centered in the mouth. So the way to get there is to have your positioning right. So body of the baby is in a straight line and the bum is tucked tight here. Mm -hmm. Tight. Good. Fingers are underneath the face. Good. So we support the weight of the head here. We're on the baby's skull, not on the neck. Mm -hmm. Good. This way the weight of the baby is taken here and not on the hand. Everything else is nonsense, I think. You know, the number of times the baby feeds the uh, length of time the baby uh, go, uh, stays on the breast. All this is not very meaningful. Even the scale is not that meaningful. And this is where I uh, think that we're losing our way, is that we're spending too much time looking at the scale, we're looking at percentage weight losses, and we're not spending time looking at the baby. More importantly than what he looks like when he's on the breast is what he's doing. And I talk constantly to mothers about how to know the baby's getting milk. We try to teach the mother to latch the baby on in such a way that when the baby's on the breast, his chin touches the breast, his nose usually doesn't. Even if the mother has very large breasts, the lips are usually flanged outwards, like that, and the baby covers more of the areola with his lower lip than his upper lip, and a baby is hanging on to the breast. A baby who doesn't hang on to the breast often will not nurse at all. They'll just sit there and uh, sleep. And this is one of the keys, especially in the first few days, that this baby isn't really latching on. He's just pretending to breastfeed. And this is a very difficult problem to deal with sometimes. So we have to make sure that mothers understand that babies are not always latched on just because they have the breast in their mouth. How do we know the baby's getting milk? That paws on the chin. Yes, that's it. Look at it. Oh, look at her drink there. Look at her drink. Oh, beauty. Lots of milk. Look at that paws on the chin. Every pause is a mouthful. You see what I mean? Looking that the chin actually drops down a little deeper and it holds. See, it holds. Mm -hmm. So watch again. When it holds, holds, it's a mouthful. His mouth is there, 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 and nothing there. So you see the mouth is literally filled up with milk. Mm -hmm. Take a look at the chin. We're looking for that pause when the chin drops down and holds. So suck, 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 drink. Suck, 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 drink. You see how the chin drops down and holds, so he's getting nice big mouthfuls here.
but if the baby is only nibbling at the breast, then he's going to spend a long time there. He's not going to be getting very much milk if he's only nibbling at the breast. So we suggest to the mother, get your hand around your breast, and if the baby's just nibbling while he's sucking but not drinking, then squeeze. And that will often get the colostrum, or even if it's later, get the milk flowing, and the baby will start to drink again. So if you see that the baby's not drinking, then squeeze. The baby should start to do some of these pausing types of suck. Keep the pressure up. If the baby is no longer drinking, then release the pressure. Wait for him to start sucking. If he's not drinking, compress. And keep the baby drinking that way until he doesn't drink anymore, even with compression. You get that baby breastfeeding well, you won't need to do any supplementation. So finish one side as well. How do you know the baby's finished? Well, because the baby's not drinking anymore. So take him off if he's really not drinking anymore and then offer the other side. And of course, there's no reason you can't go back and forth several times. Well, the one reason is that if the mother has sore nipples, but if the baby latches on well, she won't get sore nipples. And so the mother can go back and forth several times. And it's surprising how frequently a baby's no longer drinking over here on the left side, say, goes over to the right side, drinks there for a while, and then goes back to the left side and is drinking again. And some mothers find this incredible. But I've already fed them on that side. Yeah, but there's still milk in the breast, I'll bet you. Okay, and then they do drink. Cool. Yeah. Now, she's starting to get a lot of nibbles in there, so let's get going with some compressions. So we hold far back on the breast and we just squeeze. It's not a sliding down. Yep, you can squeeze from here and I can squeeze from here. And it's not a sliding down. We're not massaging or milking the breast. We're squeezing and hold and release. So it's called a compression is to turn those little sucks into drinks. And by the way, she's starting to tell us that the flow is changing by this body movement that she does. So a baby will lie still, peaceful like an angel, when they're happy with the flow. But the minute that flow changes, they, they start to, well, they move. They move the hands. So I thought that was gas. It's not gas? No, not at all. And in fact, you know, a baby can react so violently with the f knees drawing up and you pounding at the chest and pulling back and going like this. And stretching my nipple. These compressions simulate letdowns for the baby, and they stimulate letdowns in the mom. There are some moms who take a little while to let down. So we do the breast compressions right from the very beginning. Then the milk starts gushing out. We ease up. We don't need to do the breast compression anymore. Then towards the end of that breast, as baby's draining it, we may need to go in with the breast compressions toward the end there to keep up that consistency of flow. Okay. There are some women who need to do breast compressions throughout, and there are some who do absolutely none. of cells, it's almost like grapes, in the breast, and they're all producing milk. And sitting around these uh, cells and groups of cells, there are little muscle fibers. And when a baby starts to nurse at the breast, there are signals that sent to, are sent to the mother's brain that say to the brain, oh, there's a baby suckling there, make the milk go faster. And the muscles contract, and they push the milk forward. And so that's what happened when this baby was hardly drinking on this side, on, and all of a sudden she started to drink plenty. The mother had a letdown reflex or a milk ejection reflex. The trouble, though, that happens there, too, is that if the baby doesn't really nurse well, then the milk supply actually can decrease. So you get sort of a vicious circle of baby doesn't feed well, baby doesn't gain weight, baby doesn't feed well, baby milk supply decreases. And why is that? Because the baby is initially not latched on very well. And we know a baby's not latched on well. We hear it all the time. It hurts when I put the baby to the breast. Well, if it hurts, then something's wrong. Now, unfortunately, too often, sore nipples are considered a normal part of breastfeeding, but they're not. Okay, so what do we do for sore nipples? The best uh, treatment for sore nipples is prevention. We get that baby latched on well from the very beginning. 
if we get that baby skin to skin with the mother so the baby latches on all by himself, that baby will latch on well and the mother won't have pain. And I think that this is the one thing that we can do for mothers that is just incredible because it can be painful. In fact, a lot of mothers say it's worse than labor. Well, it shouldn't be that way. And I think that's another thing that a lot of health professionals need to learn. Too many are telling mothers, oh, it's normal for nipples to hurt for the first three or four weeks. Well, it may be common, but it isn't normal, and it can be fixed. And we shouldn't allow mothers to suffer for such long periods of time. What should the baby look like? The baby goes to the breast, hits the breast with his chin, the tint chin touches the breast, but not the nose. He's covering more of the areola with his lower lip than his upper lip, and he's slightly tilted up towards the mother. And we teach that with this cross cradle type of hold. And what's the treatment for sore nipples? A good latch. Supplementing may be necessary from time to time. There are truly women who haven't produced enough milk uh, or won't produce enough milk, partly because the baby uh, got off to a very poor start, partly because, in fact, some women just cannot produce enough milk. Most of the time, supplementation, when it's given, is not necessary. Um, but there are those occasional circumstances. All we do is sacrifice the top of a bottle nipple, because who needs that? And this is just very easy. Slip it in. There you go. The other end has two or three holes in it, depending on what brand it is, what make it is. Very often there's a marking on it. Uh, here's a black mark to let you know which is the end that you obviously put in the baby's mouth. The latch has to be good. Chin in the breast, not the nose. Going near the corner of the mouth. We don't pull on the breast back. We don't pull back on the breast. Just near the corner of the mouth, laying it flat on the breast, not going perpendicular. Mm -hmm. Flat near the corner, pointing towards the roof and getting both holes in. Now, he's got to suck for it to work and if it shoots oh, up the tube as fast as it did, then it's in the right spot. And how do I really know? There's a mouthful. Mm -hmm. Suck, mouthful. Different ways to supplement are legion, but there are better ways and worse ways. Uh, we tend to use uh, what I call a lactation aid, which is a tube that runs from the supplement along the mother's breast so that the baby is breastfeeding, but at the same time is getting this extra supplement. This is a very important way of supplementing. It's superior to other methods because the baby is still breastfeeding. So what I often say is that babies learn how to breastfeed by breastfeeding, and mothers learn to breastfeed by breastfeeding. And if the baby is being supplemented at the breast, then the baby continues to get the mother's milk even though he's being supplemented. Babies won't reject the breast if they're being supplemented in this way because, as far as they're concerned, they're getting milk from the breast. When we give babies bottles or other methods of uh, supplementation, babies can sometimes learn very quickly that they're getting milk from somewhere else other than the breast, and many babies will then start to refuse the breast altogether. Even if the mother's not able to produce all the milk the baby needs, there's still much more to breastfeeding than just the milk, so that the mother can continue to breastfeed if it's at all possible. And this is why we teach the mothers how to use it properly what we tell the mothers is first, uh, here's how to get the best latch possible. The better the latch, then the less the mother will need to supplement the baby. The better the latch, the easier it is to use the supplementer, and the better the latch, the sooner the baby will get off it. Then we teach the mother how to know the baby is getting milk. We then teach the mother how to use compression to keep the baby drinking, and then once the baby no longer drinks, even with the compression, then to switch sides and to offer the other breast and to repeat the process. And the mother does at least both sides and then introduces the supplementer and allows the baby to drink as much of the supplement as he wants. As the baby gets more milk from the mother, then the mother will be introducing the lactation aid later and later in the feeding. So that if things go the way we would like them to go, eventually the baby will stop taking the supplement.
When we have a baby who is not latching, firstly, this can be a very, very difficult and upsetting time for mother. Mother often perceives it as baby rejecting her, refusing her. It's usually a baby who has no understanding that the breast is a place to get the food. What we do tell mothers, though, is if baby does not latch in the first few weeks, don't panic. It gets better. For some reason, there's a magic period somewhere between four and eight weeks postpartum. Somewhere in that window, all of a sudden, many, many, and most babies will latch, as long as mother has a decent milk supply. So firstly, skin-to-skin -skin contact. And as much skin-to-skin -skin contact as possible. And that means naked baby, except for the diaper, and naked mom from the waist up. The more baby spends happy times at the breast, the more baby is going to be interested and eager to get to the breast and go ahead with his or her natural suck reflex. As well, what we want to do is start to feed baby at or very close to the breast, if not by breast. So if it means that we have already been giving bottles to the baby, then the baby should be fed the bottle right at mother's breast. So, and baby's cheek is resting right up against the breast. The other thing is, if baby is being fed by cup, to try to keep baby in as close as possible to mom so that baby is understanding again, feeling, sensing, smelling mom. First of all, start with good positioning. So get baby tucked in tight here, fingers underneath the face, holding far back on the breast. Give baby every opportunity to get on. If baby actually does come on the breast, we squeeze the breast immediately to help baby get a gush of milk, which hopefully gets baby to start sucking. And then again, we continue to use compressions to keep up that good speed of flow. We may get a baby who just isn't interested in sucking. Well. Finger feeding is a very good temporary transitional tool to get baby to the breast. Again, we can try, firstly, finger without any tube on it. So just dry finger, let baby suck for a few seconds. If baby sucks, it may say to baby, oh, suck, 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 it's time to suck. Bring baby over here, sucks on the breast, squeeze. Sometimes that's all you need. Sometimes though, baby's not convinced. A little tube on the finger that sits into the supplement, which hopefully is expressed breast milk, and baby sucks a little bit and baby draws the supplement up the tube. Then baby transfers that same knowledge, hopefully, as we take the finger away, try the baby at the breast. If I suck correctly, I will get food. We find that mother or dad or baby just says, that's it, I can't take it anymore, fine. You give up on that feed, you try again in the next feed. You will have another opportunity. But this is a very good way to teach baby that if I suck, I will get food and we do it at the breast. So put baby to the breast, use the lactation aid right away, and this time it may be advantageous to raise the supplement, get very fast flow at the breast to make it very enticing for baby to stay there. And this way, the breast will definitely be able to compete with whatever source of feeding the baby has had up until that time. So if your baby doesn't latch at all, not at all, find a method of feeding that you can do close to the breast as much as possible. Get your milk supply out there as much as possible. Never pump before attempting at a feed. Always pump after the feed so your breasts are as full as possible. Keep baby always happy near the breast. Try the baby at the breast. Don't lose hope. Get some help from a good practitioner and usually it turns around very nicely. Babies, of course, can be colicky for many reasons. The incidence seems to be less in breastfed babies than it is in formula-fed babies, but it does occur. One of the big helpful things about colic is that no matter how long and how difficult it may seem, it eventually gets better. The 
real issue is not how long the baby's on the breast, but how well the baby breastfeeds. So what we tell the mothers is, for example, milk increases in fat as the baby nurses longer. If the baby gets more high-fat milk, the baby is less likely to be colicky. But just keeping the baby on one breast doesn't make sure that the baby gets higher fat milk. When the mothers no longer see the pause, instead of letting the baby just fall asleep at the breast or have the baby fall as pull away from the breast, we teach the mother, okay, get your hand around the breast, and as the baby sucks but doesn't drink, compress. And that compression will allow the baby to get more milk, and that often is all that's necessary in order to fix the colic that the baby may have. You know, the benefits of breast milk, I never talk about the benefits of breast milk or breastfeeding. I talk about the risks of formula feeding. And anybody that suggests that infant formulas are almost like breast milk hasn't a clue. They're not at all similar. The only similarity between them is that they're both liquid. But if you look at the biochemistry of breast milk and formula, they're very, very different. It's normal to breastfeed. That's what babies are supposed to get. That's the stuff that they were made to get. But I think there's more there, and it's hard to prove some of these things. The sense of empowerment, the sense of uh, accomplishment, the sense of, of self-worth that mothers develop when they, when they breastfeed successfully. Because it's not easy always, that's for sure. But when you overcome difficulties, it becomes something of sense of pride and self-worth and self-esteem. And I think this is something we often forget. And if we're talking along those lines, the special relationship with the baby, which I just cannot believe that people don't see this, that they don't believe that there's something special about the breastfeeding relationship. That's because they don't look, because they don't think, because they don't watch. They think it's all the same, but it's not.